hi guys welcome back to my channel once again thank you so much for clicking in case you're new on this channel you are most welcome and if you're my returning subscriber thank you so much for always coming back to watch my videos premier gang you are the best so guys today we are having a sit down okay so today we are going to talk about a topic that is so so interesting and has been requested by a lot of you guys so i said why not so today's topic we are going to talk about my experiences and culture shocks in kenya as a ugandan i'm so excited <laughs> i've always wanted to do this video for you guys and today is the day but before we jump into the video kindly subscribe if you haven't already guys a lot of you guys haven't subscribed and you're watching my videos kindly kindly guys go and click on the subscription subscription is for free and again if you haven't turned on the notification bell what are you waiting for kindly go and cross check and see if you turned on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos i've had people saying harriet we miss your videos it's because you haven't turned on the notification bell so before we jump into the video i'm giving you some few minutes so that you can turn on the notification bell and if you haven't subscribed kindly do subscribe to my channel all right let's jump in into today's video so today i'm gonna talk about my experiences and culture shocks in kenya guys let me tell you like i've got a lot of them but let's try to list down all of them okay <laughs> anyways you guys will know that now i'm back in uganda and i'm doing this video from my country um in this beautiful garden i love this garden i always come here to do my live stream so um it, 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 I've really really missed it. I've really missed this place. So today let's talk about the culture shocks. I have a lot of them and Kenyans please don't come for me. <laughs> don't come for me. But before we begin, you guys know that Kenya is a visa free country. Most of the East African countries are visa free countries. Like you don't need a visa to go to Kenya, you know, like that's what I love about it now because um, most guys have been asking me, Harry, did you get a visa going to Kenya? What did you do going to Kenya? Guys, Kenya is visa free. Kenya and Uganda. Like, you know, we just, we, Ugandans just go to Kenya without a visa. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so um, my first culture shock is Kenya is so fast for me. Kenya is a fast city. Like, hey, Nairobi. Nairobi is guys my, you guys will so uh, you guys saw my first video in Kenya um, my first 24 hours in Kenya guys that day actually the very first that was with Esther and Juguna lifestyle shout outs to you Esther and Juguna lifestyle if you're watching this video so um, Esther took me to the city the first day in Nairobi guys hey hey Nairobi was so fast for me <laughs> Nairobi is a fast city guys like everyone is so fast in Nairobi people mind about their own businesses like yo hmm. I was even telling Esther can you please calm down like because she was very very fast like eh? I was like what am I really in the right place like yo like Nairobi is really so fast if you were to go to Nairobi guys like even the way you move the way you eat everything has to be fast <laughs> people don't waste time in nairobi i don't know but someone told me um it's like that because people have a lot of things to think about like a lot of problems like worries i don't know if that's right but um a friend of mine told me that and they were and she was like um like that's why the city is so fast people don't sleep in nairobi like it's just a lot like i was so shocked like even tapping on someone like there's a time i went to nairobi i remember that i that day i wasn't with esther and juguna lifestyle and then I was supposed to meet someone at the archives, the National Archives. Guys, hey, I tell ya, like I was kind of lost. And then I tried to talk to someone. The guy just bypassed me. I just wanted to ask, like, wait, do you know this place where it is? And it was just closed. The guy just looked at me and passed. And I'm like, what did I do? Like, yo, hey. Like it was so crazy. It was so crazy for me, but I loved it anyways. But Kenya is a fast, fast city. <laughs> life in kenya is fast guys life in kenya is fast people mind about their own businesses so that was my first culture shock and if i'm lying guys let me know in the comment section but i feel like for me where i come from yes uh kenya uh, sorry kampala is fast but it's not fast like kenya kenya is too fast everyone there is so serious you know hmm. i was so shocked actually so um my second culture shock was uh, the matatu culture guys when it comes to matatu culture the nyangas 
<laughs> if we talk about the nyangas guys yo especially those ones that go to rongai those ones that are full of music guys let me tell you matatus in nairobi are a moving disco it's just a moving disco let me tell you like i was like where am i like I was just hearing about Matatu culture, Matatu's having a Matatu's having a lot of music. Then I was like, no, I have to experience this. Like you can't go to Nairobi and you don't have the Matatu culture, guys. Then you you will have not experienced Nairobi like so well. Guys, so the first day like I went into that you guys call them Nyangas, something like that. Guys, you the bus was so loud. The Matatu was so loud. Like music everywhere you can actually forget even where you're going guys me i was and you guys know that i love music like i was just enjoying the whole time i was like what like that music is like boom 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 oh my god you feel even like your heart is like boom eh. hey hey my tattoos in nairobi are too loud especially those ones going to rongai they have screens those, those big screens the lightings at night eh. i even don't know the person who started those matatus guys let me know do you know that one person who started all those matters because i feel like there's a lot of competition in nairobi like when it comes to like these ones that are not so loud like the super metros those ones that go to thicker road those ones uh, that go to thicker road are not so loud compared to the ones that go to the city guys yo hey like, I don't even know the person who started that thing of having uh, matatus with loud music, big screens. Um, they have a lot of prints outside, celebrities printed on the cars. Yo, eh, hey, hey, I was shocked. I was like, what? Where am I? Like, the first day actually I entered that matatu, I was with Esther. And then I told her, Esther, what, what is happening here? Like, like because she told me at first she was like do you want to experience it? I was like yeah and then she was like no I don't think it is good for you it is so loud I was like no I came here to experience all that so we went into it guys you can't even like hear your neighbor you have to shout <laughs> the person is seated next to you but you have to shout for the person to hear everything yo matatu culture it's something else and the fact that it has got free wi-fi though me i couldn't use the wi-fi because i'm a content creator it's not good like for us to use public wi-fi because you can easily be hacked your account can easily be hacked so i had an amazing experience in the nyangas the screens yo matatu culture is something else like if i had a chance like to do another video i would it's just that um i just i was just on a rush but i wanted to do another matatu culture for you guys because people were like no harriet you need to experience different matatus but yo even the one video that i did for you guys when i was in a matatu like it was crazy like people were just looking at me dancing like ma now, me, I just had an amazing time in those matatus. The fact that they were loud at the first, at first, when I entered my first time entering a matatu, and it was so loud, I was feeling, I was, I was even doing like this because it was so loud. But then afterwards, I was getting used to it. Uh, the time I was going to and the city, every time, every time I could go to the city, I was getting used to those matatus. You know, yo, hey. And actually, guys, if you didn't watch that video of what I did when I was in a matatu, like I was showing you the matatu culture, kindly go and watch it. I was with Dolphin254. Kindly go and check her out. Guys, we had an amazing time. Like, I was just dancing the whole time. I was even telling my friends, like, I just wish, like, we don't even get out. Guys, we entered into the matatu. What time was it? I think it was around uh, 5 We left the matatu coming. Guys, me, I was just enjoying. I just told the guy, drive up to when up to where you reach and then we shall stop there. <laughs> my friends are like this girl is crazy guys me i was just dancing enjoying myself if you go to nairobi and you don't experience the matatu culture you haven't seen anything the lighting yo hey hey so i was just so shocked that was my my second culture shock in uh, nairobi i didn't expect to see such matatus like that that are so loud you know because in uganda actually for us we call them taxis our taxis are not loud like they are not like if, if you put on music that is loud people even can be like what is this one doing so i feel like ours are kind of boring i don't know if ugandans we should change a little bit because i mean if someone brings that into uganda because i know ugandans are party animals like it would be so fun someone going home in the evening listening to some music like it can even make you like you know forget about your stress yo i had an amazing time
Mm-hmm. But those ones going to thicker road, those ones, they ca- you can even tell them to reduce for the volume. And then um, maybe you have a call, they can reduce for the volume. Like the volume is not so loud, those ones going to thicker road. So if you're watching and you always board that road going to thicker road, you know what I talk about, what I'm talking about, that's the super metros, they're not so loud. So if you don't want loud music, both the super metros because hey the nyangas are crazy yo i'm already actually missing kenya i'm already missing nairobi but soon before you know we shall be back though i will not uh, visit nairobi i'll be going to the other side of uh, kenya like those other places that i didn't visit like nakuru kisumu uh, naivasha some good places i didn't visit so the next time i go back to kenya i'll be visiting those places you can as well recommend me to other places that i didn't visit but that was my second culture shock. My third is M-Pesa. Mm. <laughs> Yo. Like, the system in Kenya is just so perfect. Like, I should say it's just so perfect. Like, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you're watching and you're from Kenya, and if you're watching your Uganda and you're ever going to Kenya, you know what we're talking about. Like, M-Pesa is something else. Like, I've never seen a shop where, oh, I've never seen um, a place whereby you go to and you pay goods and services using your M-Pesa. Like, isn't that incredible? Like, M-Pesa is just perfect. Like, it's just cashless. Kenya is just cashless. Like, people are not used to moving with cash. Like, the same way it is here in Uganda. Because, like, in Uganda, we are used to having cash, 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 cash. But when it comes to Kenya, you just have to have M-Pesa on your phone. Like, just see my friends getting out of the house. And then I'm like, okay, you haven't carried any cash. And my friend could be like, no, but I have my phone. Like, Empesa is everything in Kenya. Like, it's just a fast system. Yo, you go to the local, even local market, you go to buy tomatoes, onions. You ask them, Empesa, they say yes. And you're like, what? Like, buying goods and services? I feel like Ugandans, we should, we should copy that system. Like, it's so fast instead of, uh, because in Uganda, you have mobile money, but mobile money can't buy goods and services. And even in Uganda, you have M-Pesa, but it's mainly for sending money. Like, Ugandans know it for only sending money. We don't even, like, use it here. There are shops, there are few shops of which you have to look for those shops, you know. So, um, in Uganda, you have to, you can use mobile money, but to send money, just sending money. Not even buying goods and services, like... I feel like we should adopt with that system of MPS. I even don't know the person who started up the MPS system, but yo, it's perfect. Like, kudos to you, to that person who started up MPS, because I feel like that was so pro. That person really thought of, you know, a lot. Like, 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 hey, hey, everything is just simple in Kenya, you know. Mpesa, if you don't have Mpesa, actually, you find it hard in Kenya because even in the Matatus, they tell you to use Mpesa, Lipa. You use Mpesa, then they tell you to go to Lipa Mpesa, then then you continue with the transaction. Like it's just fast. You don't need to give cash. Like even sometimes, actually, I could go in in town and then uh, I could give cash, and then the guy is like, Don't you have Mpesa? Like everyone is just so used to Mpesa. So I was like, Even having cash in Kenya is kind of useless because. People are used to M-Pesa, M-Pesa. You go on a border, border. Even on a mere border, border, guys. You can use M-Pesa, which is different from Uganda. Like, yo, that system is something else. <laughs> M-Pesa, I had fun. Supermarkets, you can use M-Pesa. Local market shops, matatus. Like, it's just a, it's just a system there that, like, just simplifies life for sure. Like, you don't even need to look for cash and then you stress someone looking for change that is how good it is so my other culture shock was mpesa it's, it's something different you know so my other culture shock is um uh kenyans being so patriotic like yo if we talk about being patriotic kenyans are so patriotic hmm? actually even when i went to mombasa i went to malindi you guys saw all those videos like Kenyans are just so Kenyans just love their country like if, if you look at Kenyans like if you travel like I could see Kenyans having res, re, these like these bangles like this me I have the one of Uganda I love my country I'm also so patriotic I love my country and I have the one of Kenya that's how much I love Kenya so you could see like almost each and every Kenyan having this wrist this wrist of Kenya the, the flag of Kenya that shows you that they love their country. Kenyans love each other. Yo. Eh. 
hey, I was like, wait, wait a minute. Huh? So that's one thing that also shocked me about Kenyans. They are so patriotic. They love their country. They represent their country actually wherever they go. Because even I see it like from a lot of content creators like Miss Trudy, like wherever she goes, she always loves, um, you know, representing her country well. Like they just represent their country as well. So I feel like Ugandans we should also have that. Like wherever we go, be proud of your country. It's always, to, it's always good to be proud of your country. So... Kudos to you, Kenyans. Kenyans love their country like you. That was another culture shock. So another culture shock that I experienced in Kenya is Kenyans are camera free. Kenyans are camera free, which is different from Uganda. Ugandans, please don't come for me, but this is the fact. You know how it operates. If you're content creator and you're from Uganda, you know how Uganda operates when it comes to content creators. Like Kenyans are so free with camera. I was very, very shocked. These guys literally even fight to enter into your camera just to be captured. They can even tell you, hey, um, can you please put me in camera? Like, yo, like I was shocked. I was shocked to hear that, like, like you move on the streets. Even the police guys, like, you move on the streets and then they're like, mambo, or they're like, um, niaje. Like, for, that is how, like, they greet. Either you say mambo, niaje, shikamo, um, like a lot a lot of greetings so and then they're like what are you shooting like they're so humble even the police guys are so humble guys let me tell you the police guys can come there so, yo and at the same time you're filming and they're just in here and you're coming like what are you capturing uh, are you a youtuber because they know youtubers are so many like kenya is one country that is free with content creators so if you're out there you want to start up your youtube channel you don't feel free wherever you are travel go to kenya kenya is a country that is free for all content creators there's a lot of content there you know so if you haven't visited kenya kindly go because you have an amazing time there you will not even feel uh threatened to shoot on the streets of nairobi because it's authorized like they allowed it the government of kenya allowed content creators to shoot wherever they want as long as you don't trespass the the government uh you know um places like if, if you don't trespass the government like the parliament if you don't go to those areas you, you're good to go for sure you're good to go you just have to know where to go that's it but everyone is free with camera people are used to content creators in nairobi like i was shocked yo and once you tell them you're ugandan or you're foreigner mm. <laughs> you guys know what i'm talking about like they just be so nice to you like kenyans are so nice like you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, hey, Kenya will always be at heart. Like, I already even miss it already. But yo, like Kenyans are camera free. People even fight. They are so okay. I should say they are so exposed. Like, everyone wants to enter into your vlog. Even the police guys. Like, yo, I was just shocked. I was just shocked. Like, because here in, in Uganda, it's kind of different. Like, for you to shoot a place. Even shooting the capital city, people just shout at you, what are you doing? Where are you taking us? I feel like Ugandans, we are kind of backwards. Ugandans, please don't come for me, but I feel like we are kind of like backwards. So we should kind of like change that. If the government allows content creators to shoot freely, that would be nice. If, because I feel like we have tried um, showing people that we are good. We are not doing this for a bad cause. We are just trying to market our country because there are people out there who don't know uganda uh some people talk bad about uganda so we want to show the good side of uganda because if you guys have watched if you see like a lot of videos that are blow there are those places that are slums those areas for poor people you know there are those ones that blow but we always want to bring the good side of uganda so ugandans if you're watching kindly don't come for us this is how we earn and we are just promoting our country we want people to see the beautiful sceneries of uganda how uganda looks like because it's the pearl of africa and we want to represent the pearl of africa you know so if if you're watching and you're from uganda kindly kindly guys don't come for us we are not doing this for a bad cause we are not taking to say we are not taking you guys to sell you some people be like what are you doing especially when you go to chikubo if you guys know the place called chikubo yeah there's a place in uganda called chikubo it's full of business entrepreneurs guys just shout at you where are you taking us why are you holding that camera are you a news reporter yo like you ask like a lot of questions which is different from kenya because kenyans are so free like you go to the car uh, you go to the market like there's a time I was shooting a video uh, in town. I was with Romy is me. Um, 
and then there's a guy who was putting on a suit so i was kind of like scared i was like okay because I, I rarely see these guys on the street so he came actually he, came, he, fa he first bypassed us and then he came back and he's like Hi, um hello how are you and i'm like i'm fine i was still filming if you guys watch that video and then the guy is like uh, uh what is this what are you holding uh, oh wow this is a nice camera like yo hey and this guy actually was working in the government like the way he was even dressed like you could tell he was maybe either working in the parliament or something because we were not so far from the parliament the time we were shooting that video so i felt like wow even these guys know that there are people who have cameras on the streets you can operate as everywhere like hmm, hmm. kenya kenya is something else yo i was shocked I was shocked. Kenyans are so free with camera. That is my other culture shock um, that I had in Kenya. Another culture shock that I had in Kenya was the security. Security in Kenya is... I don't know. It is so different compared to ours in Uganda because most people actually when you ask them why don't you want to come to Uganda they always say Ugandans are full of guns Ugandans are full of guns they, they is that what they call it buduk eh bundukis bunduki the guy the guns are called bunduki in uh, Swahili they are called bundukis like in Uganda we have got a lot of police guys like army people have guns so when you ask Kenyans why don't you want to come to Uganda they always tell you eh hey, Uganda is full of guns Uganda is full of bundukis bundukis you know but Kenya you find even a security guy uh, maybe even at the bank those people even don't have guns I was shocked I was like wait like yo <laughs> I was so shocked you find a security guy uh, maybe uh, on the entrance of the bank without having a gun. You find a security guy on the entrance of maybe a, a supermarket eh? without a gun, guys. Like, and they are friendly. Yo. Mm -mm. I was shocked. That was my other culture shock. All right, guys. Let's talk about the foods. Yo, I was shocked about Kenyan foods. Like, when it comes to food, I feel like Ugandans we are better than. Um, I'm not trying to compare, but that's the truth. Kenyans, we are in foods. Ugandans are better than Kenyan. Uh, Kenyans, that's the thing. Because in Uganda, you guys know what I'm talking about. In Uganda, we have like varieties of foods. Matoke. We have um, sweet potatoes, cassava. Like, okay, when it comes to foods, Ugandans. If you guys have ever come to Uganda, you know how it is. So I was shocked buy food in Kenya you buy ugali alone you buy skumawiki and meat alone I'm like wait what's this because in Uganda we are used to having uh, all the dishes and sauce and then they charge you once but when it comes to Kenya it's different when it comes to Kenya it's different and again the ugali okay when it comes to ugali uh, ours doesn't have like a lot of nutrients but um, the one of Kenya is better. I would say the one of Kenya is better than the one of Uganda. But Kenyans love a lot of dry foods. There's a time we went to the restaurant. I saw a guy ordering for chicken. Just fried chicken. Actually, which is not even wet. Wet chicken. Because uh, Kenyans call it wet fry, dry fry, something like that. So it was dry, something like dry fry, something like that. It wasn't having sauce. And the guy asked for ugali. And it was okay. I was shocked. I was like, wait. Where is the sauce? Like, for us Ugandans, we are used to having, like, sauce on each and every dish, you know. Kenyans, please don't come for me, but your foods are dry. Your foods are kind of dry. But I feel like if you want sauce, you can tell them to also put sauce. So it's just that for us here in Uganda, we are used to soup, soup. Food having a lot of soup. Um, I remember even there's a time we went to Nyabuhansi village, and then we were, we were given a night by Ayamara. Shout outs to you, Ayamara, if you're watching this. We were given a night as Ugandans to cook for Kenyans. So when we cooked for them, actually they were shocked. They had an amazing time. Everyone ate the food. The food, the food was so delicious. They were shocked that we mix matoke with the rice, with sweet potatoes, like every dish on one plate. Yo. So when I went to Kenya, it was different. I was shocked to see that... Um, most of them love ugali, sukuma week. If it is not sukuma week, uh, if it's not meat, then it's chicken. Like, mm -mm. you cannot give a Kenyan, or I had, you cannot give a Kenyan man rice, and yet there is ugali. Like, Kenyan men love ugali so much. That's what I had. So, you could find every time ugali, ugali. Mm -mm. So, I was kind of shocked when it comes to that. 
So I feel like with Kenya, when it comes to food, we are better. Ugandans are better than Kenyans. That's the thing. And you guys know it's the truth. And again, another thing that I was shocked about with our foods is gideri, something called gideri. I, I even refused to, because I just had a taste of it. There's a time my friend was telling me, come and test. This is so nice. Guys, I'm not trying to offend anyone. Kenyans, please don't come for me. But this is the fact, guys. Let me tell you. When it comes to Uganda, gideri is food that is eaten by people who don't have money. That's the thing. Like, I'm not saying that Kenyans eat it because they are poor. No, guys, don't get me wrong. But the thing is, gideri is found in those remote areas. Some parts of Uganda, actually near the border, that is whereby you find people eating maize mixed with beans. Like, Kenyans, please don't come for me. But I was just shocked. That is my other culture shock. So again, when it comes to street foods, Kenyans have some nice street foods. Yo, I give it up to you. Kudos to you guys. Like, I enjoyed street food. Like, every time people could tell me, Harriet, you have food. Guys, me, I'm a foodie. To be honest, I'm a foodie. I love food. When it comes to street foods, I was so active there. I was very, very active on street foods because I loved street foods. I talk of the smokies, mayayi, mayayi mixed with kachumbali. Mayayi actually, guys, is eggs mixed with kachumbali. Like everything with with street foods has to be with kachumbali, has to be with uh, some sauce, choma sauce. Yeah, they add their choma sauce like to sweeten it. And then we have smokies. We have a uh, smocha. Hey. Smocha is a mixture of chapati and uh, and smokies. Like, yo, guys, <laughs> street foods of Kenya are something else. I had an amazing time. When it comes to street foods, I give it up to Kenyans. Like, your street foods are so, so tasty, like, so delicious. Yo, like, I could eat street foods on the road. I could go back home and I even feel like I don't want to eat anymore because I could enjoy them more. Like, Especially when we, if you guys never watched our street foods that we did, the video that I did for street foods in Kenya, kindly go and watch that video because you guys saw each and every. Like, you, you, if you if you didn't watch that video, you you're missing out. Please just go and watch that video because I really had an amazing time. I interacted with amazing people on the streets of Kenya. I met one of my uh, Ugandan sisters working there, and then I, that's how I met Brian. Uh, the street kid that we are now trying to help to go back to school so I, I've, I've met like amazing people on the streets of Kenya so the time I was doing street food I really met amazing people incredible people and then when it comes to maize with like guys I've never seen roasted maize with chili so the time I saw that I was like wait wait a minute what's this so Esther was like try it guys yo <laughs> it's so tasty like I've never seen maize mixed with chili like they they put chili on maize like roasted maize and then you eat you, okay you guys can call it corn i'm talking about corn or you can call it maize they put their chili that's all street food like yo i was shocked and tastes so good if you love chili mm -mm, go for that if you haven't tested the maize with chili go for that kindly go for that guys yo that was some other other culture shock that i had and to make it worse, when I went to Mombasa, I saw more, more street foods that I didn't expect to see. Cassava crisps, like Kenyans re utilize food like so well. When it comes to cassava, they can cook cassava's food and they can cook cassava's crisps as street food, guys. When I went to Mombasa, you guys saw that. When I went to Mamangina and I showed you how those people prepare uh, cassava crisps, like yo, yo. <laughs> hey, hey. Kenyan street foods, top notch. I was shocked. Like, cassava crisps yo mm -mm. kenya is something yeah so you guys i was shocked when it comes to your street foods i was so shocked that is my other culture shock as a ugandan in kenya and um another culture shock that i got is uh in uganda we we are used to to having a uh, polythene bags of which I don't know if that system is going to go away right now but in Kenya when it comes to Kenya they use paper bags paper bags like everywhere paper bags you can literally actually you cannot actually find polythene where like when it comes to Uganda it's different when you go to a supermarket you can't just get something and then uh, you take it even without carrying it either in a, in a polythene bag or but in Kenya it's normal it's okay I was asking my friends I went there's a time I went with Kobenata to buy um I love yogurts, guys. So I went to buy yogurts. So after I was like, Kominata, where is the 
bag. Minata was like, they don't give up to when you pay. You ask, you pay. You have to pay for that bag. I'm like, wait a minute. Yo, like I've supported you. Why, why do I need to pay again for that? paper bag to carry my stuff so i was shocked that was something else that shocked me in kenya hey mm -mm, mm -mm. i feel like kenyans should change on that for sure because i can't carry soda all the way from the supermarket where i stay just in my hands or like kenyans find it normal it's okay people carry stuff on road it's okay without even putting it in paper bags i was shocked <laughs> yo i was shocked i was so shocked because in uganda it's kind of different but the fact that you guys use uh, paper bags, not polythene bags, that's really, really good because I feel like uh, polythene bags pollute the environment. So I feel like Ugandans need to change on that. And uh, we pray, we pray that one day, one time, we catch up with Kenyans for sure. But that's something that shocked me. Hey, 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 hey. that's something that shocked me. Another thing that shocked me was um, Kenyans loving foreigners. Oh, Kenyans loving Ugandans. Like, Mm -mm. that's something that we you guys need to tell me like what is happening like wh why do kenyan men love ugandan women like so much like why do kenyans love ugandans like so crazy especially the ladies like when you talk about you're coming from uganda like i could do my vlogs and then i tell them i come from uganda i'm a content creator they're like oh we love you oh we love ugandan ladies you guys are so nice you guys know how to respect your men eh yeah so what is wrong with the, your Kenyan women? Kenyan women, please don't come for me, but this is what I experienced on the streets of Kenya. Like, when it comes to Ugandan women, there's the way Kenyans, Kenyan men love Ugandan women, like, so crazy. Even the content creators that I've ever gone to, Uganda, to Kenya know what I'm talking about. Like, every time you could meet a Kenyan man, they could start, oh, Ugandans are so nice. Oh, you guys are so beautiful. You guys kneel down. Okay, the thing that shocks them more is the fact that we have this culture of respecting our elders. Because me, where I come from in Uganda, you're not supposed to give an elder something like like standing, like water standing. No, it's, it's, mm -mm, it's not proper. So you're supposed to kneel and then you present whatever thing you're supposed to give the person. But in Kenya, it's very okay. A girl stands and then shika they get but in uganda let me tell you they can even punish you for that they can actually your parents can stroke you can give you strokes for that parents can give you strokes for standing uh, st like even greeting an elder guys greeting an elder in uganda you cannot greet someone older than you while standing you have to kneel down you have to kneel down and then you greet yo hey in my dear come to kenya mm -mm. like it's normal okay i can understand because that's culture i think that's why kenyan men fall in love more with ugandan ladies because we have that thing of culture in us like yo we are respectable like we treat our men well you know like i feel like that's why kenyan men fall more in love with um ugandan women drop a comment and let me know is it true guys because i feel like when i had conversation with you with kenyan men the most thing that they could talk about is the the culture thing that we have in us of kneeling and then uh, respecting our guys you know hey, that thing really really triggers them eh? <laughs> i don't know i feel like um guys if i'm lying kind of drop a comment and let me know if i'm lying but i feel like kenyan men love us for that love us for that more but yo even your ladies are nice you, you, um your ladies are nice kenyan ladies are nice so kenyan men kindly watch out okay <laughs> so uh, another thing that shocked me was the internet internet in kenya is cheap internet in kenya is so cheap guys internet in kenya is cheap the fact that you can even buy bundles for only one hour you have that option of buying bundles for only one hour 20 kenyan shillings one hour they give you bundles for one hour 20 kenyan shillings you can imagine so in kenya is a, kenya is a place where by content creators have no problem hakuna matata like they have no problem like you buy data 20 shillings and they give you data of one hour yo i was shocked internet in kenya is so cheap the fact that there is even Wi-Fi on each and every street. You go to streets, there is Wi-Fi. You go to supermarkets, there is Wi-Fi. You go to Matatus, there is Wi-Fi. Yo, mm -mm. 
So Kenya content creators in Kenya don't need, they have no problem when it comes to data guys. You can even upload a video and you've only used either 40 shillings or 20 shillings guys. And you upload a video so like that is something else that shocked me in Kenya which is different in Uganda. When it comes to Uganda, data in Uganda is very very expensive very expensive guys when you talk about the data in uganda it's so expensive so kudos to kenyans if you're a content creator and you want to go to kenya don't even get scared of oh i'm going to spend a lot of money on data oh i have to buy data to upload a video yo it's cheap you can literally have data at only 20 shillings for one hour 20 shillings for one hour guys hmm? i was shocked i was shocked i was shocked so that is something else that really shocked me. Another thing uh, that shocked me is the infrastructures. When it comes to buildings, that thing, I don't know, but um, it really, really shocked me when it comes to the finishings of the buildings in Kenya. When you look at the buildings in Kenya, like, the finishing is... And actually everywhere, because when I went to Malindi, it was the same. When I went to Mombasa, the finishings of the buildings were almost the same. When it comes to the buildings of uh, Kenya, mm -mm. no, 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 no. The finishings outside, they are always funny for sure. Like you, they are so rough. I was even asking my friend, why, why are they constructing houses like this? Then my friend was like, no, they just want to be unique. Yo, Kenya is a developed country with full of beautiful skyscrapers. Eh? But the finishings, no, 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 no. no. The finishings, guys, mm -mm. like to me, they look kind of funny because they look like as if they're not finished well but for my friend they were like they want to look kind of unique that's a design maybe that's how it is but uh, drop a comment and let me know why are the buildings like that because me i was shocked like to see nice nice skyscrapers nice skyscrapers and then they have a, a weird finishing yo kenyans please don't come for me but that's the thing that really really shocked me and up to now i'm still shocked because Talk of Malindi, talk of Mombasa, talk of Nairobi, buildings are the same, yo. Huh? So I was shocked. Another thing that shocked me is the fact that Nairobi has got a lot of skyscrapers, like a lot of flats. So I was asking myself, how come like everywhere I go there are flats, 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 flats? Because even talk of Malindi, talk of uh, Mombasa, guys, you know I went to those places, but I feel like Kenyans love flats. When it comes to Uganda, Ugandans love a lot of uh, bungalows. Like we have a lot of bungalows. So I asked my friend, and my friend was like, um, they love a lot of skyscrapers because they love to utilize space. Like every space they have got, they have to utilize it. So you find each and every Kenyan is staying in a flat, and they either have Wi-Fi, like yo, mm -mm. as I like, wait a minute. Hey, that is something that shocked me actually about. Um, uh, Kenya that is some other thing that shocked me is the fact that they have a lot of tall buildings They love tall buildings and um, the country is so developed Especially on the streets of uh, Nairobi at night. Yo hey, The lighting the light yo hey. Guys Nairobi is, is really really a developed city compared to Uganda like yo Nairobi is so developed like And I could I could tell like why they call it the New York of Africa like it's so developed in the night actually in the night uh, near the Near the archives there are those big screens So that center there is known to be the New York of Africa like the New York of Nairobi, you know Like it's really really Sparkling in the night the lighting is so beautiful like yo Hey, hey, talk of the matatus lighting up in the nights, eh, with some cool music, Jamaican. What I realized with the matatus of, um, of Kenya, they love Jamaican music, Afrobeat. I'm on a like, yo, hey, 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 Nairobi is something else. Like, yo, like, my experience in Kenya was really, really incredible. I was shocked as a Ugandan for sure. In Kenya I was so shocked like yo if you haven't visited Kenya please give it a thought and go there because you're really really missing out like like some sometimes actually I could put video titles and people could be like Harriet you're over you're over exaggerating and I'm like yo just visit this country and then you see what I'm talking about like mm -mm. 
I'm being honest, guys. If you if you're in Kenya or if you ever come to if you ever gone to Kenya, you know what I'm talking about. Like Kenya is so developed. You can't compare Kenya with Uganda. I'm being honest. Ugandans, please don't come for me. But that's a fact. Like Kenya is so developed. Like I was shocked. <laughs> Yo. It's just a beautiful country. The people there are so incredible. I met amazing friends. Like. Mm -mm. I feel like everyone in Kenya is so friendly, guys. Like, everyone is so friendly. Even the police guys, security guys are friendly. Yo. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to be in such a country for sure? Especially for content creators. If, if you haven't visited Kenya, kindly give it a thought. Go to Kenya. Do your videos. No one is going to touch on you as long as you know where to shoot, guys. As long as you don't intervene the government premises you know then you are good to go for sure because me i never had any problem kenya hakuna matata kenya hakuna matata you know i feel like i want to go back and back and back but um very soon sooner than you guys know i'll for sure go back to kenya though i'll not visit nairobi this time around i'll be going to some other areas that i didn't visit like naivasha like nakuru Kisumu, some place that I didn't visit there, but I really had an amazing time. And uh, to all Kenyans that made my stay beautiful, thank you so much. Thank you for loving, loving me. And thank you for welcoming me in your country. I now know why they call Kenya the magical Kenya for sure, because hey, hey, hey. if I start talking about Kenya, guys, you're not going to end this video, but I feel like I've over talked. And, um, and thank you so much to everyone who has watched up to the end of this video. Oh my goodness. Kenya, you will always be at heart. I'll miss you. I'll surely, surely miss you. And I'll miss my Kenyan friends. But we are travelers. Maybe one day, one time, we shall meet somewhere else. Thank you so much to everyone who has watched up to the end of this video. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do subscribe, like, share, and comment. Okay? If you haven't turned on the notification bell, guys, please go back and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos that I bring out to you because I bring out incredible videos. Hmm? Now that we are back in Uganda, let me know which videos do you want us to shoot. Drop a comment and let me know. Okay, I love you all. Love is for free. Share the love outfit of the day. How do you love my print? Actually, I bought this from Malindi. I didn't show you the outfit of the day, but I'm just putting on this. Let me show you. This is how it looks. It's right here. This is my shirts culture. I bought it from uh, Malindi. Yeah. That is where I bought it from. I love it. I also bought this as a souvenir. This was just a souvenir. This is a souvenir right here. I bought it from... Uh, I was going to the giraffe center. I was with uh, Ishmael Zionka. That is where I bought my necklace. So beautiful. Let me know. Let me just end this video here. I'll see you in the next one, guys. I love you all. Bye. You can bank on it. You can put a hundred grand on it Anything I said, I stamp on it In a private plane, I lamp on it Lele old and they call me bank on it Cause I walk around with the bank on it Show them Gangnam style, put the gang on him Twist my fingers up on a bang on him Lele oh, lele oh, yeah Tobalo, I call my job, yeah Tobalo, my call